interfaith leaders and secularists sue to stop Missouri's abortion ban. On January 19th, a lawsuit was filed by the Americans United for Separation of Church and State and the National Women's Law Center in St. Louis, Missouri, challenging the state's ban on abortion. 13 Christian, Jewish, and Unitarian Universalist leaders who filed a lawsuit argued that lawmakers used their religious beliefs to pass the law and imposed those beliefs on others. The lead attorney of the lawsuit, uh, Michelle Banker of the National Women's Law Center, stated, quote, what the lawsuit says is that when you legislate your religious beliefs into law, you impose your beliefs on everyone else and force us all to live by your own narrow beliefs. The attorney general of Missouri was named in the lawsuit and said in a Twitter post that he would, quote, defend the right to life with every tool at my disposal. The lawsuit also quoted Nick Schroer, a Republican representative of the Missouri State House of Representatives and the bill sponsor saying, quote, as a Catholic, I do believe that life begins at conception and that this is built into our legislative findings. The lawsuit also noted that other Republican, another Republican and co-sponsor representative, Barry Hovis, was motivated, quote, from the biblical side of it, to use his own words. Caleb Roden, a Republican and the Senate president uh, pro tempore for Missouri Senate, argued, quote, we are acting on the belief that life is precious and should be treated as such. I don't think that that's a religious belief. I don't think that's a religious belief. That's a, how is that not a religious belief? It's vastly a religious belief. I actually do know some hardcore atheist, secularist, pro-life, anti-abortion people, but they're in the severe minority. No, no, no. Even they, that's a religious belief. For example, if you're an atheist and you believe that circumcision is the right thing to do for, you know, for boys, you might be an atheist, but that's a religious belief. You got that from religion. You know, you know, mm -hmm. maybe you don't believe in God, but you still have religious beliefs, right? So the whole idea, by the way, let's, let's make it clear. It's not life. When they say life belief um, starts at conception. Um, I mean, life is anything that has a cell has life. This is not about life. This is about consciousness. This is about self-awareness, mm. right? So technically life existed before conception, you know, so these people need to get the understanding of what they're trying to say, because the sperm itself is alive. It's a goddamn cell. So it's alive. So it's life existed before conception. So you're not talking about when life begins. You're talking about when something else begins and there's nothing special that begins at conception, right? There's nothing special that makes us care more about an egg more than a sperm, um, you know, sorry, uh, 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 you know, the more the sperm, what is it called? Um, a zygote? zygote, yeah. The a zygote has nothing more unique about it than a sperm and an egg uh, that makes us have to care more about it. So you have to find the line somewhere else. Life was way before, life was way before conception. Right? So what, what else is there? Any, if anything special about the conception, that's a religious belief. You cannot make it. There is no scientific argument that you can make about the zygote being more special than the sperm and an egg. Oh, no, no, when no, not to... the zygote. You mean an embryo. A zygote is the sperm. No, no, zygote is the combination of an egg and a, and a sperm. I swear to God, zygote is the sperm. I'm going to double check. No. no, zygote is the combination. Oh, no. You're right. It's a fertilized ovum. Okay, I yes. was wrong. So you get a sperm, you have an egg, put them together, you get a zygote. Right. So yeah. legally, legally, I don't. Know, there's no. There's no. There's not a single non-religious argument you can make for the zygote being precious. So this is completely a religious argument. So given that this is, could only be a religious argument, by making that into law, if you want to make it a law or any law that is influenced by that belief that's a religious law in a secular mm -hmm. country yeah, yeah and so part of the foundation of this lawsuit is that they are basically quoting people who are involved in, in creating and enforcing and sponsoring this legislation and they have many quotes where they can be taken making religious arguments 
And so people have tried to overturn abortion bans in various states around the U.S., but have failed. But they are taking this argument basically on the basis of the Establishment Clause and saying that this is a violation of church-state separation. And there are a lot of faith leaders who would agree with this. Like Dee has a good comment. She's saying, heck yeah, this is a religious argument and evangelicals are not the only religion. Jews don't consider a person a person until after they are born. Yes. So, so basically what we are saying is that if given that this is a religious argument, um, well, we have multiple opinions in religion. So you're screwing yourself. You're shooting yourself in the foot. You're like, oh, we should allow this religious argument, okay? Do you want to allow one of them or do you want to allow all of them? Mm -hmm. Because they are contradict they're contradictory. Exactly. Yeah. And then D is saying they, meaning people. No, Gage Amer are not D, Gage and American. Oh, excuse me, Gage and American. Um, saying they are in their own bubble and think that their beliefs are the standard. Yes, this is 100 percent true. Like this interpretation of this concept of life at life at conception and Basically, it's it's an argument over ensoulment, as you would say in an Abrahamic perspective, and they have the most extreme interpretation of this. The traditional Muslim their um, interpretation generally is not this extreme. The traditional Jewish perspective is not this extreme. It's only the Catholics and then their extremeness on this seeped into the general American culture beginning kind of around the eighties. So yeah, that's how we ended up at this place today. And in terms of this lawsuit, I don't know. Um, I mean, um, Americans United for separation of church and state and the national women's law center are very preeminent, you know, organizations. So I'm sure that they've crafted a very good case, right. But in terms of, um, the chances that this lawsuit has of succeeding in Missouri or also just the merits of the case and, and, and any particular counter arguments, I can't really speak to because I'm not knowledgeable in that realm. Um, but I'll be really, really interested to see how this proceeds. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.